Hey everyone, Solomon Charlie. Well, I'm out here in my honey house and uh, I want to take and take the uncappings out of the uncapping tank and put them in a wax melter. Uh, right now, the uncappings have been in this tank for about a week. It's been raining on and off for this past week and it has given a chance for the honey to drain out of these cappings. I've got about two and a half inches of honey in the bottom of the uncapping tank, so that's how much honey that I've recovered from these uncappings. I'm going to go through the cappings. I want to feel the cappings and see whether they're kind of dry. And these are a little sticky, but mostly dry, so that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't believe there's going to be any way to recover any more honey out of them. Uh, if I do find some cappings that are really wet, I'll put them off and over into the corner and let them stay into the tank. And hopefully uh, the honey will drain out of them so I can recover that much more honey out of them. And then, like I said, we'll fill this bucket up full of cappings, take it out to my solar wax melter, and let the sun melt the cappings and get any of the slum gum out of it and then I'll have a much cleaner uh, wax and I can either sell it for candle making or use it on my own frames to re-wax the frames if I need to. So let's go ahead and get this done and then we'll go on out to the solar wax melter. All right everyone, we're here at my solar wax melter. It was built by a friend of mine. Uh, it has an area in the top where of course you put your wax. It has a screen that screens out the slum gum and lets the clean wax pass through. And then it goes and drips into a, a bucket or a actually a plastic tub. I fill it with about an inch and a half worth of water in it. That way the wax will harden, but then it'll float on top of the water and you can just pick the pieces of wax out of the water without any problem. It's sticking to the plastic tub. I want to show you what the slum gum looks like on the screen. This is after a melt uh, several days ago. And here it is. And you can see it's pretty nasty looking stuff. Uh, I just usually scrape that off and put it over in the weeds. But that's how much trash you can get out of your wax. Now the wax cappings won't have that much. Uh, there might be some very small, small particles in there. Pretty much it's going to be 100% clean looking wax. But it does do a good job as far as the solar wax melter uh, cleaning your wax, especially the burr comb out of your hive. That's where you're going to get a lot of this slum gum out of it here. Uh, it has a glass top. It has a metal interior and it funnels down to like a funnel and then of course you just put a piece of this in a uh, quarter inch hardware cloth to filter out the uh, thing. I'm gonna bring you on up here a little closer and get you a much better uh, view of this box. Another thing that's really nice about the build that he did is there's a set of legs on the back that pitches the box on an angle so the liquid uh, wax will drain down into the plastic tub. But those legs also fold up underneath the box when you're ready to store it. It has a handle on the side, so it kind of turns into like a little overgrown suitcase. Uh, it does have a built-in prop out of wood. Uh, he does have the interior painted black, and it also is insulated with some uh, star foam insulation like you use in buildings around two inches thick. And then here is the tub here that we're going to fill it up with water. It also has a door in the front where you can slide this tub straight out without actually opening up the top glass. So let me bring you on up a little closer and I'll show you the fine details of this solar wax melt. 
All right, everyone, here's the inside of the wax melter. Let me back up here first. We're coming in from the front. And then, of course, the uh, glass is propped up. And there is the lid and the glass. And there is the wooden prop. Inside is the tray. And then here is the actual bottom of the pan. And then you have the screen, which I just cleaned out, and I'll lay that right in there. And then down here, you can see right there is where the wax drips down into this pan here, which I will fill with water. And then in the front here, the creator of this box designed a door that you can lock in place. So if you want to pull the pan of wax and water out through the front you can also here off you can see this is the insulation he's also took and painted everything black to keep the heat uh, as hot as possible all across the back area there and then what was quite nice is here's the back of the wax melter and you can see the legs there and uh, these legs actually fold underneath the hive when you get done and so the wax melter will uh, sit flat in storage so let me put this up on its side so you can better see that all right here's the wax melter lying on its side and there are the legs that I was telling you about. And then all you have to do is just turn those in and they fit underneath the cabinet of the wax melter. And then he has also installed a handle here, which you can use to lift this box up and actually carry it just like a suitcase. And it's uh, very compact and easy for storage. And when you're ready to use it again, of course, just pull the legs open, turn it over on its side, and then there it is. It's ready to go. It has the right angle for the uh, wax to be melted and drained down into the pan. All you have to do is place it towards the sun where it will get most of the sun throughout the whole day. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fill the solar wax melter with the uncappings. I already have a few bees here that are interested in the stickiness and the honey smell of the uncappings. I would just place this inside the steel uh, bin, I guess you would call it. Kind of spread it out. About five gallon bucket is not really compact either. It's about all this wax melter will hold. And it's just a good amount of wax. So we'll get this done. And then what I will do is I will take this tray here. I'm just going to go ahead and slip it inside the unit. I brought a gallon of water using a old uh, milk jug. Pour it in. Like I said, I'll put about an inch, inch and a half of water in there. So the uh, wax will have something to float on you might have to check the water because it does evaporate due to the fact that this thing will probably get over 120 to 200 degrees if it's a really hot day and a really sunny day so the water's in it's up against the spout as far as the uh, it dripping into the plastic container. I'm just kind of patting it down a little bit here. 
All right, let's get out of there, B. Go ahead and lay down the prop, close it up, and you're done. In about four hours, all this wax will probably be melted as long as it's a really good hot sunny day. Uh, to be quite honest with you, I was quite surprised how well a solar wax melter works. And it was really nice about getting, I'll say, 95% of the real heavy slum gum trash particles out of your wax. And then uh, what I do is I have a wax melting pot where I re-wax, re-melt the wax and then I let it come out the spout going through a either cheesecloth filter or a paint filter and that gets pretty much all the particles out of the wax and then it goes of course into some type of form that you want to put your wax into where it's going to cool and harden up. So until next time, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share my videos with your friends, and have fun with your bees.